So this is the third episode. Again, I do not know what this entire thing will be titled um, right now. I will definitely see at the end because it's amazing. The um, last episode, I started off with the final line, but I pretty much ended on Believable Faith Ministries, pretty much. You know, so forth and so forth. But as I said before, ladies and gentlemen, um, God bless all adults out there, all parents and etc. But like I said before, you know, because I'm going to definitely tell you a little personal story about myself. Um, on the night of, well, the pre-night to my baptism, when I was at the church, right, um, with my family uh, from Greenwood, Mississippi, by the way, in Greenwood, Mississippi, Salem Missionary Baptist Church, look them up. Um, I predominantly, like, located in the fields, pretty much. But again, look them up. Uh, I pretty much broke down and cried. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I broke down and cried, and I wanted—I really want to tell that story as many times as I possibly can. I broke down and cried um, when they um when they uh what's it called when they when they uh put the chairs up, you know, for people to come up and either join the church family and whatever type of way they they was gonna do. I got up and obviously I was doing it for you know for for my baptism that happened the next day. Lord knows, I cried. I broke down and cried. I mean, I, I went up there confident, but as as soon as I sat down, those emotions just started running through my mind. And I'm like, and I'm even tearing up right now thinking about it. I mean, I, it, it, it was running through, the emotions were running through my mind. I broke down and cried. And I don't mean like broke down, broke down, as in like I was just like weeping and sobbing all over the floor and stuff like that. But I was sitting in that chair and God bless everybody that was there. I couldn't even look at everybody. I swear, I was trying to hold the tears back. But I was looking up at the chandelier. And I was like, Lord, this is destiny with you. This is destiny. Because like I said before, if anybody, again, for the last year or two knows me, especially from Allen Dini's high school, you know, for actually more than two years, but definitely the last two years, you know I'm a very loving, caring, spiritual human being. And I definitely feel like, or felt like, for the last year or two, the top thing that was missing in my life was baptism. Because I knew that I had a heart for the Lord, and I knew that every day I was doing His work, and I knew that every day it was, you know, the, the blessings manifested, and again, showed what they showed in my life, and the discerning God of me, and etc. So, I always knew that I had that destiny and that purpose with the Lord. I always knew I did, you know. And it was just, but it was just that one little thing gnawing at me the entire time. Like, why don't you get baptized? Why don't you get baptized? Why don't you get baptized? You know, it was that one thing that was gnawing at me all the time. Because, again, I, again, because I, I understood the concept of it. And I, I understood the concept of it. And I wanted it. But I guess you could say I just never found the nerve to ask for it to a certain degree. Because my biggest thing I was going to tell kids or tell anybody about it if, because say I hadn't got baptized this summer. The top thing that I was going to tell people was the reason why I hadn't uh, was because I was waiting for my own, you know, I was waiting for my, you know, my calling, you know, my calling for it, you know. But I can't, but I'm not going to lie to you. I've been at that calling. I, I've been at that calling for like the good past two, three years. I had that calling of baptism. I had it, you know. I just never, just never wanted to bring it out, I guess, or whatever the case is. But most definitely, you know, um, it came out, you know, like I say, you know, uh, it came out. I mean, I broke down, and again, I don't mean broke down, broke down, but obviously, again, I was weeping. I couldn't even. I, I, and I was trying to, and I was trying to hold all my tears in. But instead, I again broke down. I cried in front of everybody there, and it was quite, it, it was quite beautiful. It was amazing. But like I said before, I was staring up at the chandelier the entire time, saying. Lord, this is destiny with you. This is the next step in my journey with you. This is my my next step in my walk with you. Because, again, I see way too much hypocrisy and double standards every single day of my life, practically. And it's time to expose them, ladies and gentlemen. For example, I'm still a Christian truther, but I can assure you I was more more on being a Christian truther back when I was like 13, 14, 15, whatever. And I kind of, you know, I when, don't I don't think the words divulged from it, but I definitely, you know, kind of, I was kind of drifting a little bit from it over the years not to say i completely lost it because i didn't completely lose it i still kept calling stuff out but i didn't call it i didn't i wasn't doing it the way i used to you know most definitely i wasn't doing it the way i used to and it was just the fact being that um regardless i felt like look at the again look at the times we're living in i felt like dear lord this is destiny with you 
because you know my heart for you. You know my soul for you. You know my intentions with you each and every day. As I walk this earth, as I talk, etc. You know everything, you know. And I was thinking to myself, you know, this is destiny with you because now I'm even more qualified to, again, go out there and most definitely to the youth because the youth is my target audience. Again, the music is there. All the other videos on the YouTube channel is there. The youth is a part of my everything. Um, I'm now more qualified to tell any and every kid, go get baptized. I am more than qualified to say that now. I would have said that before I got baptized, which I think I did once or twice maybe. But it's just now I'm more qualified because if they would have asked me, because I'm pretty sure the natural response is, have you gotten baptized? I would have told people that I was waiting for my, you know, waiting for, for my sign. You know, you know, that's what I would have told people, which is, again, a good and smart answer, you know, and a real answer. But at the same time, I, you know, I straight up, I've been at my sign. I just hadn't taken advantage of it yet. And this summer, all glory to God, it happened, and we see where it is now. And we're going to definitely see all the, see at where it leads, leads me in the future. But uh, I guess, um, yeah, I, like I say, you know, I really want everybody to, again, take this world we live in and think to yourself, truly, truly think to yourself, again, if I were to die tonight, where am I going? Because as I said that before in the last two videos that I posted, and I think I, I, I said that in... If you re re rewind um, in the past week, I said that about two or three other times. You know, there's just so much going on, and especially involving race, there's so much going on, ladies and gentlemen. And you have to decide, because a lot of people, have, again, have neg negatively bought into literally so much bigotry. A lot of people have bought into so much bigotry. Uh, and, and honestly, you know, I wouldn't say for me it's depressing, but it's definitely... You know, it's disheartening to know so many people, especially the ones, especially how can you go? I don't, I, it almost doesn't make any rational sense how you can go to church and still be a, a bigot. It almost makes no sense, honestly. I'm, I'm almost, but it, but I, one of the pastors that, um, that, uh, at Salem, uh, he pretty much said as a lot of people in the, you know, in the church today who again are some, you know, some of the biggest double standard hypocritical people you've ever, you, you'll ever encounter. And I want people to understand that again, you know, I understand the beauty and the brilliance of paying attention to your elders, pay, you're trying to learn as much as you can from God first, any and everybody, which is what I encourage most definitely. But again, I hope everybody, you know, if you haven't, if you don't have to truly develop the sermon yet, you know, I hope to hope and pray to God you eventually get it because again, there's so many false prophets out there. And if you learn from the wrong person, you will most likely end up becoming the wrong person and so forth and so forth. And we're dealing in today's day and age where we don't need any, we don't need any more people in jail, but I am not going to lie to you. There's a lot of people who are walking these streets each and every day who they literally deserve to be there, you know? And I think we all know that they're walking free, but they deserve to be there. And there's a lot of people who, um, what's it called? A lot of people who are in jail who, Again, how many, a lot of them who were in jail who did absolutely nothing wrong. They were just in the, at the wrong place at the wrong time. And they're in jail for God knows how long, and etc. So what that pretty much points to, we definitely need a ton of prison reform. We definitely need to review a lot of these cases and re-interview multiple times a lot of these people and get some of these people who, who, we, who we, again, who we know didn't do anything wrong, get them out. And the people who, if they did do something wrong, they learned their lesson, get them out. So they can come back and truly contribute in the most healthy, prosperous, beneficial way to society. And et cetera. I mean, because the evidence is there. We have so many people who don't deserve to be walking this, these streets each and every day. Because, again, let's look at what's right in front of you and what's in your backyard and what's even in, in, in your own home. I think we should know this. And there's a lot of people who shouldn't even be walking in these streets because they literally are a negative, I want to say negative devilish um, menace to, to society in the most unclean, unpure type of way. Like I say, you know, one of the top things, like I said, for better and for worse, I want all kids out there to learn from me is just, number one, get baptized before it's too late. Um, two, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. And, actually, Sorry, that's really out of order. 
Except Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior uh, before it's too late. Um, yeah. Uh, that first, then get baptized, and then, again, start walking in your faith with the Lord. Because we are living in a day in a day and age where, again, you can't deny it. A lot of people will try to deny it, you know, and or try to run away from the conversation. But it's right there. It's literally right there in front of you. It's, it's coming from every distance. And again, I'm telling you, you have to figure out which side of this history do you want to be a part of. The side that literally helped heal the culture. Or the side they kept on racially dividing it off of what's, you, you, you know, stuff like that. You know, you, you really, because I'm, I'm telling you, the race war is what the devil wants. And that's what I mean about a lot of people are definitely fueling the race war. And again, we're already in one, if y'all didn't really, y'all didn't realize that. We're already in one. And I'm, t and then what I'm trying to do is give y'all the two plus two way to stop the race war to help heal the culture so that race so that race war dies down and ultimately gets eradicated love thy neighbor as thyself that is the cure to racism that's the cure to all hate and what's amazing with that is how many people understand that already but i'm telling you still do not fully you know I want to say walk by it. How many people understand it but still don't fully walk by it? Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that, that do not fully walk by that. Who they will definitely hold up the flags and do whatever else, you know. And they'll, you know, hold up the posters, you know. Especially when it comes to the politics manner of, like, again, you know, I mean. And again, it's very unpopular for me to go into this when it comes, when it, when it came to the presidential stuff of, you know, of Trump versus Hillary Clinton. It was very. Um, it's very unpopular for me for me to go into this. But again, you know how many people were holding up those love Trumps, hate, you know, posters. You know how many people who hold those things up probably have the most one-sided point of views on things, double standard, uh, and are two-faced. There's a lot of people. Trust me. Don't think that every. Don't think it's it's. It don't, do not think that everybody had to help those to help that up. You know, you know, truly is about it. Don't do not think so. Trust me, I'm willing to bet at least half those people, if not most of them, are some of the most double standard, one sided, biased human beings you've ever met. I'm willing to bet at least half to most of them. And I say that because, again, that's again literally where a lot of the evidence proves. You know, a lot of the evidence proves, and the way a lot of the evidence proves is just go by your daily habits, go by your daily conversations with them. A lot of people be like, "What evidence are you talking about, Nate?" Again, go around some of them. Go around some of them for yourself and talk to some of them yourself. You know, and again, if I am wrong, dearly do forgive me if I am wrong. Dearly do forgive me. But the one thing I know you can't knock me on is the way to help heal this culture is to truly love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the one thing I know nobody can knock me on, nobody can deny. That's the number one slash the only way to heal this culture and to, you know, with this, with, with, with this, with this, with this race war, die it down towards completely eradicating it. Nobody can logically deny that. Two plus two deny that. Nobody can really. But that, but the, the but the part about the again the the love Trumps hate thing, and when, and when it comes to a lot of their their followers, that's just definitely from what I know I've seen. You know that you know what I've again I'm 20 years old, and I can definitely assure you I haven't seen everything. But I know I've seen way too much. I've seen way too much to believe that as many people who say that they are, are upright and conscious, I've seen way too much to where, the, again, the evidence doesn't back that up, that they are upright and conscious. It doesn't. It bags. It really bags up that some of those same people who held up Love Trump's hate are probably some of the most double standard, one-sided, hypocritical people you've probably ever, ever met. That's, again, my opinion from my experience. Again, nobody has to... Nobody has to defend that. Nobody has to, under, you know, fully understand. That, I guess, or, or if not that, if not that part, nobody has to defend it. Nobody has to take my side. Nobody has to. I mean, because for me, this is not really about fully taking sides. You know, unless it's like I said before, which side of history do you want to be on? You know, and stuff like that. But again, God bless everybody. Forgive me if I ended up being somewhat of a contradiction in the last thirty seconds of me talking. Forgive me. 
But again, y'all understand um, what I'm trying to say. Um, love thy neighbor as thyself, and that helps 